Hey, what's up? It's Funnel here once again. This time I wanted to be talking about something that I get asked quite a bit, and it's how I do my drums. I always say that there is really nothing special about my drums. It just comes down to break selection and the sounds and the way you arrange your drums. But I know that's not really telling anyone anything unless you show them. So let's actually do that. This is, let's call this is a masterclass on how I do my drums for those that are interested. Let's take a look at a break. I guess I have a, a bit of a taste for a funk type of drums. Let's listen to this. Well, that almost sounds drum and bass -y in a way, a little bit. But there's there's a few things that I look for in a drum break. And it's a solid kick and a solid snare and a few things. What do I mean by a solid kick? Well, well, for for example, I want to make sure that I have a, a kick drum that that that's like a like eighth note kick that you can make long enough that you get a solid like doom without having to filling the gaps with something. What do I mean by this? Well, let me show you another classic break. Let's take a look at the uh, hot pants. Let's listen. What happens here, you're getting a constant 16th note shuffle and there is no a solid kick that's like eighth note long or longer. Um, except this one here. The thing is, because I want to make sure that I, the kicks that I get are not super short, like it has to be like doom. This is something that we can do in a doll, but sometimes I just, I may do this. I take the kick and I just uh, copy it, paste it and reverse it. And this, this is the, the part that I would not be looping. This is the part that I want to loop sometimes if the kick is really short. But let me go back to the break that I started with. So I make sure that I have a solid kick. This is definitely something that I can loop if I want to, like this part here. I will take a look at that in a doll and show and explain that to you. And I get a solid snare as well. But the one thing that I'm super interested in. Let me find it here. This thing here, listen to this. This thing is jungle to me. This is the thing that I fell in love with in mid nineties. This is the thing that caught my ear. And by then I had only been hearing electronic music like dance and techno and gabber and stuff like that. And then I heard something by Moby and then I heard drum and bass and they use this a lot. It's, it, it's 16th notes and there's a hi-hat and a, what's called a ghost snare. What is a ghost snare? Well, let's listen to a regular snare. Ghost snare is not as strong as an accented snare. Ghost snare is something that they, the drummer plays between the main hits. So this is the one thing that I usually, this is the one thing that has to be in a break for me if I really want to get busy with it in drum and bass. In hip hop it's different, but this time I'm talking about drum and bass. So this is one thing that I want to have in it. You can bring an, a ghost snare from another break into the break and just make it happen if it doesn't have one. But just in this tutorial, I will be using one break only because I think stylistically in drum and bass, that's a bit of a thing in a way to take one break and work with that. And then on the other hand, you have um, guys like Johnny L who always did their own breaks and Fotech as well. But that, that's not something that we will be um, taking a look at in this tutorial because that would be a whole another chapter altogether. But the next thing 
I will take a look at is um, chopping the drums. Sometimes I use an app called Beat Cleaver. You can chop your drums with any audio editor in the world as long as you can just bring in an audio file and, and mark the chops and then export them. And you can also do this in a doc. So I'm using Beat Cleaver and the reason I like it is it's you can make it very big and you can mark the hits and listen to them. And once you once you're done, you can also export them. So sometimes I just listen to shit, listen to the sections and just chop them tight. Chopping your drums kind of tight is essential for getting a tight groove. And the thing is, I still don't trust algorithms that to do the chopping and I mean the marking of the chops. I don't trust them 100% because you always have to go and fix this thing. I mean, sometimes in DAWs and whatever, the the automatic algorithm, it can be pretty good, but what you sometimes get is the chop ends up here or it ends up here. So you still have to do this manually and in some perverted way, I just, I like doing this. So I used Beat Cleaver for marking the drums to chops and then I just export it. And just for the sake of uh, keeping it short and snappy, I will be not doing the marking here. But one thing that I want to point out is you have to chop each and every hit that the drummer has played. What do I mean by this? For example, well, you get snare, fair enough. Then you have, that's a hi-hat, and then you have this. There you have the ghost snare. And I never ever leave this as one sample. I always chop this because I wanna be, I just, this is how I do it. I wanna be able to uh, do the, ghost snares and stuff manually. I never ever 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 time stretch drums. So I just want to chop it good and then go from there. So now I would export the chops and bring it to a DAW. So for now I'll just fast forward that and let's go to the DAW. So we are now in Ableton Live and I have exported my drum chops to desktop. So let's open up a drum rack. In Ableton Live. I, I do use other you know, devices and whatever every now and then to make my drums, but whenever I work in Ableton Live, I always use Drum Rack and I will just select and drag all the drum hits to Drum Rack. And what will happen is it, it works as expected. Now, first, let me do a very silly sounding drum loop and ex uh, explain something about broken beat. My intention is to make something that sounds very stiff, so. I know the drum sounds are, they fall short right now, and I will address that soon. So that's, don't worry. But let's listen to this. Oops. And this. And this sounds like the worst drum loop ever. This is like sped up disco and everybody would go home if you played this. So what makes a broken beat broken? Well, the thing is, in, in a lot of non-broken beat, the drums, I mean the main drums, the kicks and snares, they fall on one, actually, let me count this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So the main hits fall on one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, four. The main hits fall on those beats in non-broken, that's a stupid word, but still, in, in music that it's not broken beat, and drum and bass is broken beat. So how do I fix this? Well, it's almost a rule that in broken beat, such as drum and bass, the kick will never ever fall on three. So let me move it somewhere else and replace it with a hi-hat. Let's listen. Hey. 
it sounds way more like drum and bass, right? Well, that's one thing. That, that's a, how you start with broken beat. So now for the drum sounds. I know that they fall short. So what do you do about it? One thing, I never ever stretch, time stretch drum sounds. I don't do that because I want to keep it natural. So in Ableton Live, I use sampler on drum rack. The reason I don't use simpler in drum rack is that simpler still does not have an alternating loop, which is this. It only has the regular type of loop, which is this. And it doesn't sound natural when you're uh, looping your drums. I just don't like how it sounds. So Ableton, criticism here. Please give us alternating loop in Sampler. But for now, I'm using Sampler because I like the way how it sounds when you're stretching the drums. So let me stretch the drum sounds that I'm using in this loop. I have like 64 hits, so I won't be doing it to all of them now. But um, I'll just stretch the ones that I'm using for in this loop. Let me see. So... Um, yeah, this is, this is actually a, a very essential thing in doing drums that sound natural. The reverse looping. So I'll fix this and I'll just cut, cut the video a little bit and skip to once I'm done. Okay? So yeah, I'm done looping a few drum sounds. <clears throat> so let's listen. So fair enough, it, it sounds like your very standard drum and bass. So let's start arranging the hits a little bit. Oh, and one more thing. When I was on stretching the hits, there's a few considerations, of course. You wanna make sure that the drum drums are tight and they start where they, they're supposed to start and that you don't get any extra dirt in, inside the loop. Like, like you, you wanna go for a very, uh, natural loop let's listen you know you just you just gotta get the dirt out like you don't want to get any of that thing in the loop but anyways let's arrange this a little bit in my music i don't always make snare fall on four either so that's a deviation for your from your standard whatever Let me push up the tempo a little bit. And let, let me bring in the ghost snare, because that's one thing that I really love in music, in drum and bass. I just gotta find it. There it is, I love it. So listen to how much it actually does to the beat. Let's do it on and off. I'll duplicate the bar and do, uh, I usually, I, I always start with one bar and then I do another one and do a little variation inside of it. Um, let me do this. I might wanna use a ghost kick. And when you do a ghost kick, it may sound a little better if you go for a kick that is not as strong as the main thump. Like here, I'm, I'm doing a kick and a ghost kick that's a bit lighter. If you listen, main and ghost. So let's listen. Yeah, man. One thing that I just cannot explain to anyone is rules, like where you can put these things or not. It's just something that I, I literally cannot give any rules to this because it's not something I've studied in a school or, or from a book. It, 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 it's only come from listening to funk type of drumming, which is also heard in hip hop and stuff like that. But this is the thing, like I used to, I, I move, I usually move the main hits from the like their usual usual spots and then do ghost snares here and there 
And I hope you probably heard that these little things go a long way, actually. Because, I mean, honestly, there is not that many things you can do. And this is the one thing that I always say when people ask me, how do you do your drums? And I'm like, it's not really anything special. It's just arranging the drum sounds. One thing that I sometimes do to sort of uh, create a moment of space is... Um, because you hear that here mostly the things happen in eighth notes like ticket 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 and sometimes it it feels good to go like ticket 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 I know that sounds stupid but let me show you what I mean. Um, oh yeah, actually I've already looped the kick. So here, let me just drop the um, hi hat off and put a longer kick over there. Listen to that. So yeah, that's one thing. And I don't really do any other special stuff apart from this. I know this is probably a massive <laughs> a massive letdown to a lot of people, but this is this is how I do my drums, seriously, because a lot of people think there's a whole lot of science behind it, but there really isn't. It just it comes down to sound selection, looping your drums, and making sure that there is no air between the hits because let me just shorten the hits just a little bit and you hear how much it actually does sometimes I hear drum loops like this like they're almost there but maybe to the producer hasn't realized that there's something missing like let's 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 listen to this and let me stretch the hit Oh, by the way, in Ableton Live, if you hit legato, it'll fix the stuff for you. One thing I do, I've actually done a video about this before, but if I want to tighten the sound a little bit, I could use multi-band dynamics device of Ableton Live. And I would do gating. Let, let me mess with this a little bit and then I will explain. Pay attention how the sound changes. It's a massive difference, like you take the noise out. I'm not saying that you have to take the noise out because in many, in many cases the noise is actually what makes the vibe of the break. But I understand that some people want to go for a clean contemporary vibe and this is your guy. So what do I do here? I use the middle module, the below ratio, I'm um, sorry, the below mode of um, the compressor, which, which actually means that this bar here sets the threshold below which things get cut when I go for a ratio below one. So let's see the mid. You'll hear how when I bring the threshold up, and the ratio is below one. It's it's essentially gating. It's 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 cutting out all the stuff in the meds below my threshold. So this is something that I do sometimes, but not every time. And one more thing that I sometimes do is if I want to change the snap of the drum sound. I use Neutron by Isotope, the transient shaper actually. I think the way that this drum loop sounds is it's very good. I don't think there's a whole lot you want to do to it, except you probably want to brighten it up a little bit. But just to give a shout out to Isotope for creating a great product for drum freaks, 
this 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 is on the kick only on the kick actually let me shorten the loop so we can so let, let's listen to what I can do to the kick Let me put the same plugin on the snare as well. One. Yep. Let me just delete it from the kick and the snare and let me just put it on the whole track and listen to how it sounds. Listen to, see how noisy it got when I turned the multiband dynamics off? But let me just keep it actually off and let me mess with the break a little bit. I fucking hate it. Let me just play the whole thing. So these days, at least one thing that I do sometimes, if I want to sort of bring the brightness up, up a little bit, is I put a neutron on the track and just mess with the high attack. Listen how much energy it brings to the break when I, I actually, what I'm doing is I'm raising the attack of the high frequencies. Listen to it. And if I mess with the mids, it brings presence. But I'll be honest, I go fairly easy with this. I don't, I don't do any big changes. I use, just use it a little bit to change the tone. And one thing, of course, that I will skip for now is the fact that most of the time, I like my breaks a little bit on the old side because I, I love the I like the funk type of sound so I, I sort of prefer that and one thing that I like on my breaks is uh, saturation that's the, I, I sometimes I sample my breaks into old samplers actually this break was sampled into a Kai S950 to give it a bit of tone like dirt, shit. So, because I, I don't want, I don't want it to sound very, like polished and and too. I don't want it to sound like 2017 bass music. So I usually uh, mess with different saturators if I don't just sample it through my hardware gear. So that's really the basics of how you do drums in drum and bass. I know this tutorial was way more about arrangement and the vibe, but really, I'm sorry if this is a letdown, but this is how I do my drums when I'm messing with one break only. I could do another video about doing a break of my own from different parts, because I think that is also a bit of a lost art that I would love to hear more of. Think think full tape for example but for now this is it and whatever comments you got hit me up i will appreciate it till the next time guys